you kind of started on a journey of, of discovery, a, a journey of investigation, inv- investigation of the Christian faith. For right. some viewers who are watching today, perhaps they want to start on that journey too. What advice mm-hmm. would you give to them? Well, you know, it's, this is a very good question, and, it, and, uh, and my answer is going to be different than a lot of people that maybe you're interviewing uh, and that I know that who, uh, for whom apologetics, um, particular issues of defending the faith, etc., um, made a big difference. That wasn't the case for me. Uh, it wasn't until after I became a Christian that I discovered um, a lot of the particular answers to my challenges and a lot of the particular evidences in favor of the truthfulness of the Christian worldview. <clears throat> what happened to me, though, this is a really important part, is there was a time in my life when I was willing to say, okay, I want to know what's true. Sure. All right. Uh, for a long time, is I didn't want to know what was true. I wanted to know whatever I could find out that would reinforce what I wanted for me in my life. So I'll just give you an example here. I was a moral relativist at the time um, in the late 60s and early 70s, and that means I did not believe in objective morality. Now, this is very convenient, by the way, because it means that I can do whatever I want and nobody can say I'm wrong. That was the great appeal. However, I was also um, marching against the war in Vietnam at the time. And the reason I was against the war is because I said it was an immoral war. Now, there's a dramatic pause there for a reason, because... As you notice, I can tell by the look on your face, and others may be thinking, wait a minute, there's a contradiction here. On the one hand, you say there is no objective morality. On the other hand, you're saying that this war is immoral. You can't have it both ways. Either there is no objective morality and nothing is immoral, including my behavior, or some things are immoral moral because there is objective morality, and that might include some of my behavior. Okay, so notice how I was willing to live with attention because of the payoff it gave me personally. I just I was aware of the contradiction, but I was dismissive of it Mm. because I didn't care about the truth. At that point, I cared about me, Mm. what I wanted. So it was a deeply narcissistic perspective, which, frankly, I think a lot of people are committed to nowadays. Uh, But this goes back thousands of years. I mean, this is the condition of man. We are concerned about self first. and so what happened, there was a point in my to- uh, of time in my life, Paul, where I came to a crossroads, and essentially I said, I want to know what's true. That's what began to make the big difference in my life, when I was willing to let my guard down, uh, the, an inappropriate guard, a self-serving narcissistic guard down, and say, okay, what's reality actually like? Now, those aren't the words I used at that time, but that's the way I understand what I was doing. And so I would suggest, and I actually prayed a prayer, and uh, not being a believer, and it wasn't becoming a believer, but I was out in the field at a military base, because I was in the military at the time in in the summer of 1973. And um, I said, essentially, God, if you're real, and Jesus is who my friends, my brother in particular is telling me he actually is, then I want to know that. If this is the truth, then I want to know that. <clears throat> now, there was no, um, you know, lightning or <laughs> flashing or coconuts falling from the tree or anything. It was just a guy praying, but it was probably the first genuine and sincere prayer that I'd ever prayed. And after I prayed that, that willingness to be open, that God started to work in very profound ways that persuaded me of the truthfulness of Christianity, even though all of my questions mm. and challenges had not been answered. Okay, and um, and I have discovered since then that I'm not the only person who's prayed a prayer like that. There are lots and lots and lots of people who, th- for whom that prayer was a really vital part of their journey yeah. to come. To a relationship with God through Jesus of Nazareth, and uh, so my recommendation for others, they can you know listen to Bill Craig, uh, Doctor William Lane Craig. They could listen to uh, uh, my podcasts at Stand a Reason or a host of other things that are valuable to challenge their thinking about what worldview is actually true. But if their heart is not open to the truth, they will find 
shallow ways of dismissing all the evidence. This has been my observation. Uh, a person has to first deal with their own self and say, look, at, do I want the truth or do I want whatever I want? All right. And once they decide they want the truth and they say to God, I want the truth, if you're there, and I, I didn't know whether God was there or not when I prayed that prayer. In fact, I even said, I feel like an idiot. I'm standing out here in the field talking to this guy. That's what I actually, that was part of my prayer. But uh, it, I think that, Paul, is really, really a vital step for anyone in the process before they begin embracing other things. Mm. So it's about having a right heart motivation, isn't it? And being open yes. and honest with truth and. Yes, kind of, right. It, yeah. Tearing all the facade away, really. There's a price to pay for changing your mind on any important issue and changing it for the truth, okay? Because the truth is not particularly popular. No. Um, and especially this truth today is not particularly po popular. No. But that doesn't mean it's not the truth just because lots and lots of people dismiss it 